we're going to talk about the secret to that effortless power. The secret is called elastic energy. It's the way you can move your racket fast without trying really hard to make your racket move fast. And the elastic energy is power that you generate through your tendons, not your muscles. Quick science lesson, you have muscles which make your body move, you have bones which acts as the frame for your body so you don't collapse and fall over, and then you have the tendons which connect the muscles to the bone so when the muscles contract it makes the bones move. And elastic energy is learning how to create power from your tendons and not from your muscles. You have to use your muscles in order to create elastic energy, but you're not using your muscles to try and make the racket move fast. Let me explain. Tendons are elastic, which means they're stretchy. Imagine this is a tendon. If I stretch out my tendon like this, it's gonna snap back into place. And that snapping back into the place is much faster than using your muscles, with much less effort as well. That's why you can see pros look so effortless when they swing the racket. It's because they might not know it, but what they're doing is, they, is they're using their muscles to generate elastic energy, which then propels their rackets even faster than if they try to be really strong. Elastic energy is the way to get the racket to move super fast with low effort. Before I'm gonna tell you how to use elastic energy, there are some things you need to know first. Number one, you need to have strong tendons. How do you build up the strength of your tendons? You need to do lots of eccentric work, lots of isometric work, and especially the explosive isometric work, exercises for your muscles, especially the shoulder rotation, external, internal rotation muscles. Secondly, you need to have good timing. If you start to use this, number one, your racket's gonna move much faster than you used to, so you need to adjust to that, but also because the racket's moving so fast, you need to be able to time the, the initiation of the swing with the right position of the ball so you touch the ball in the right place. Otherwise, if you don't have good timing, you're gonna find it very hard to stay consistent by using the elastic energy. And thirdly, we can't actually use our tendons. We have to use our muscles in order to unlock the elastic energy, right? But we need to use a certain type of muscles which are our fast twitch muscles we need to exert big amounts of force in small amounts of time, which your fast twitch muscles are useful for. Doing low, low weight, full power movements will help you to develop more of those fast twitch muscles. You're here because you have healthy strong tendons, you have good timing, and you have powerful fast twitch muscles. Your muscles can generate a lot of power in a short amount of time. What are the muscles responsible for elastic energy in tennis? And it's only two. You have internal rotation of the shoulder. This is the primary movement, it's going to be for your forehand and your serve. And then you have the external rotation for your backhand, which is going to be the primary move for your backhand. Just to know, you need to use both of these motions in all the shots, but different ones are primary ones, which means that's the motion you execute when you're actually hitting the ball. As I said, elastic energy is the stretching and snapping back of the tendon. We use this here to stretch and snap back our tendons to propel our racket faster. This is where you see what other people call racket lag come into play now. Let's take a forehand, for example. I'm here and I'm gonna to touch the ball here. You will see most, of, any good player, they're gonna be coming up to the ball like this. But people don't understand it. They take it the wrong way. They try to tell people, show me the bus of the racket. Pull the bus of the racket to the ball. They are wrong. I am saying that with confidence, they are wrong. What you're really doing is you're, as you're coming up to the ball, you're using the anti-motion of the forehand. Remember, the forehand, the primary motion is the internal rotation. So the anti-motion is going to be external rotation. You're using the anti-motion to come up to the ball, to stretch out your tendon as you're coming to the ball. When this tendon is fully stretched, then you engage your primary motion, you engage the internal rotation, with the boosted supports now of the tendons snapping back into place to super flip your rackets. And that's where you get the massive racket head speeds that the pros get. It's not because they're trying so hard. It's not because they've got something that you don't. They're just using their tendons and you are not. The same thing with the backhand. I'm just give an example for one-handed backhand. I'm here fully loaded, fully locked. And then as I'm going, 
to hit the ball, the racket head is going to drop. We're going to see internal rotation of the shoulder happening, which is going to stretch the tendon. And then as I'm coming about to hit the ball, I start to engage the primary motion, which is external rotation, aided by the snapping back of the tendon is going to super flip the racket back and increase the racket head acceleration. That's what Elastic Energy does. It helps you to increase the speed and acceleration of the top of the racket. If you have high speed, high acceleration of the top of the racket, you will get good power and spin. It's physics. How can you increase the amount of elastic energy that you can put into your tennis shots? I'm going to show you. It's to do with how much anti-motion can you execute before your shot. Let's take forehand for example number one. If you remember forehand, the primary motion is internal rotation and the anti-motion is external rotation. If I allow myself more room to make external rotation in my forehand, i.e. I allow myself to make more anti-motion in my forehand, I'm going to get a bigger tendon stretch, which means more elastic power. Let's say I'm hitting a forehand now. If I'm prepared like this, all the way here, I can't go, I can't go any more forwards. Now I have lots of, now I have almost a full turn of anti-motion or external rotation in the forehand, which means I'm going to get a super big tendon stretch, which is, means it's going to snap back even faster, which is going to propel my racket even faster. Just for example, it's going to look like this. If I completely have my racket here, now I have no room for any more external rotation. I can't put my racket anymore this way, right? Which means I can't stretch my tendon anymore. So what's happening now, now I have no elastic energy. My tendon's not being stretched and it's not snapping back into place. So I have to completely rely on the primary motion, the internal rotation to generate any power. And the racket is going to be much slower for the same amount of effort. Do you see anyone hitting like this? No, because it's too hard to, to, time your, to time your shot like this and swing is, is a bit crazy. And you don't need as much power as you think you do in tennis. A lot of people these days like to go for a good balance, a good mix between being completely, trying to fully maximize elastic energy and not having any at all. A lot of people like to, like to have their rackets at kind of a 45 degree angle. If I'm hitting over there, slightly pointing forwards to where I'm going to hit. Like that, I, can, I still have a good amount of control and consistency in my shot, but the elastic energy I'm creating is still a good amount. If you look at the same thing on the backhand, it's the same. With the one-handed backhand, if you really wanted to maximize elastic energy, you will, you, you will start like this. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to internally rotate all the way here so my tendon stretches so I can propel my racket forwards again. So it's going to look something like this. Oh my God. So it's going to look like here. All right. That's very fancy, very messy. I don't recommend doing that. I'm just showing you the extreme. And if you had no elastic energy on your, on your backhand, you're going to start your swing like this. My racket can't go much more this way anymore. I can't internally rotate. I can't do anti-motion to create elastic energy. And I have to rely on the primary motion again to generate any racket head speed or power. But that's going to be a lot more load on my shoulders. I'm going to be a lot more likely to injure. I'm going to get more tired in my matches. I'm going to have less power. Just overall, bad days. Which is why you see, again, people tend to take, people tend to take a middle, somewhere around the middle with a good mix of both control consistency and elastic energy so they can execute a good shot. Same thing for the serve. I actually dislike a lot how a lot of people teach to serve. I think they don't really know what's going on with the serve. You don't serve with your tricep. Again, you serve with the internal external rotation of your shoulder. The primary motion is going to be your internal rotation. This, this motion here, this is the primary motion of your serve. A lot of people when they teach serves, they teach this. But the reason I don't like, the reason I don't like this, you start here completely externally rotated. So that means I don't have any more room to do anti-motion, which means I can't create more elastic energy, which means I need to use more effort to make power and my life is worse. In the serve, if you want to create more elastic power, get more power for free, you need to start your swing with the rackets on the same side of your body. Let's say I'm serving into the camera now, right at you. 
Now from here, I can get this anti-motion, which is gonna bounce my rackets so I can swing faster. Rather than here, I'm just trying to completely muscle the whole shot. How much elastic energy you want, it's really up to you. It depends on how strong your tendons are, can you withstand it, and how good are you actually at tennis? How good is your timing? How quickly do you read the ball? How early are you prepared? If you have good answers for all of these, you can handle trying to generate more elastic energy. If you're not very athletic, if you don't move very well, if you don't have good timing, if you don't prepare early, trying to generate a lot of elastic energy is going to be very difficult and very hard for you.